Hey guys! Hey guys! Uh, we are right now on Moira Lakes, located in this very small town called Madoc. Uh, it's such a beautiful, cozy little place. Yeah, it's, it's right in the forest. It's mm -hmm. great to walk prints in. And it's funny that all our blogs when we're in Toronto seem to be, this is Escaping. a place we go to escape, so it's, we're constantly leaving to yeah. find our balance. But this place truly is one of our little sanctuaries we love to come to whenever we get the time. Yeah, we come a lot in the summer. I've actually been here for about a week and a half um, editing the DVD, which has been uh, amazing, but literally, uh, it's a great place to do it, but it, it, it's soul-sucking at the same time because we're sitting here for 14 hours a day. And he's alone too, so he'd be like calling me on the phone like, I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually ended up coming out here a few days ago. And we shot our whole um, recipe book and meal plan, yeah. all the photos here. It took us like a full day to get everything ready and we woke up this morning and it's such a beautiful day and I thought we'd shoot a vlog. Yeah. So this is another episode of, of what, what we, we eat, eat in a day. day vlog. Hang on, let's try that again. This is another episode of what, what we, we eat, eat in, in a day. day. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with breakfast. Okay, so for breakfast, we actually had one of our favorite new breakfast meals, which is... Chia pudding. <laughs> Mark is obsessed <laughs> with it. Once we figured out, A, how easy it is, B, how cheap it is to make, and C, how f good it tastes, it is like my new favorite thing in the world. Um, he at first, the first time I gave him to try it, he was like, what is this crap? What is this crap? And then literally like three crap. bites in, he couldn't put it down. It was so cute. To make the chia pudding, you want to start by making the mixture first. So we usually like to add strawberries. So we'll take frozen strawberries and you mix it with coconut milk. And then I add the tiniest little bit of vanilla extract to give a tiny bit of sweetness to it as well. You blend the mixture in together and then you literally take like a mason jar or a little tiny bowl. You fill the chia seeds and you mix it with this mixture. And all you guys do literally is you just put it in the fridge. Because it takes, I think it says four hours plus for the chia seeds to kind of soak the mixture in and expand, so. Yeah, and then in the morning when you wake up, you literally have your breakfast ready to go. It's amazing. You stick a spoon in it and you eat yeah. it and it's so good. And it's wonderful. And then we usually also like to top it with some fresh fruits or cacao nibs. So those are amazing bread. So for those of you guys that tend to rush in the mornings, honestly, this is one of the best things you can do because literally you prep your breakfast the night before. If you're on the go in the morning, grab it, run out the door. So it's perfect. And it's wicked too, because if you buy it in the stores, like if you see chia pudding, it's usually like- So expensive. Like six, yeah. eight, ten dollars. Crazy. And when you make it at home, it's like a dollar fifty. So, that's our breakfast. <laughs> For snacks during the day. We are obsessed with smoothie bowls lately. <laughs> Which, depending on the consistency we make them, sometimes become smoothie soups or smoothie sundaes. Pretty much it's just your regular smoothie and you top it off with awesome ingredients like fresh fruits and cacao nibs. We use uh, like, um, what are they called, cereals? Granolas? Granolas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Granolas are like uh, dried raisins. But all the that thing is it's not just a smoothie, it's a thicker smoothie mm. that you put into a bowl so it actually becomes more like a sundae and with little toppings on it that are, instead of blended up, you actually chew them up. So it gives it a little bit more of a texture. Yeah. Uh, so for today's smoothie that we wanted to show you guys, we used frozen strawberries and frozen bananas. 
and then we added in um, almond milk mm -hmm. and a little bit of almond butter, which, which acts as like the thickening agent. You want to make the smoothie as thick as possible so that the ingredients that you place on top do not sink into it. When they sink, that's when you know you have a smoothie soup on your hands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, here comes our superfoods that we love to add into our smoothies. We used spirulina. Spirulina is amazing because it's high in protein, it has like four grams of protein per one tablespoon. Which is great because this, when we use things like the spirulina and the hemp hearts, mm -hmm. which are right here, um, it kind of helps us not need or want to put uh, protein powders, like the processed protein powders. Mm -hmm. We love Vega One and we love some of the protein powders, but it's really nice to actually just use the natural exactly. protein it's sources. Instead. Nature's protein powder, I guess. So yeah, we have hemp hearts, which we also include, which are also high in protein. Um, and then we topped off this one actually with cacao nibs. Yeah, and cacao nibs are amazing. We got them right here. You can buy them in little little uh, things like this, or little, you can little, buy them little baggies. Little baggies, so you can buy them in bulk as well. And they're great because they're super high in magnesium. They are high in high source of fiber. And they have a little and, hint of chocolate, obviously, yeah. but not too much. It's a little salty, really crunchy, so it's a really wonderful texture to put on top of things like smoothie bowls. And then after that, you just top it with your favorite fruits, hemp seeds. We, we can put use granola on granola, this one. Yeah, and the granola we use actually is mixed a little bit with uh, raisins and dry cranberries, so it gives you that extra little texture. And there you have it. That's yeah. our amazing smoothie bowl. Okay, so for lunch. All right, so for lunch today, we made a spinach arugula roasted nut salad. And it is one of our favorite salads to make, and I think the ingredient that makes it super tasty is the roasted nuts. And it sounds intimidating because you're like, roasted nuts, how do I do that? But really, um, it's a very, very, very simple and quick process. So to make the nuts for our salad today, we used almonds and pecans. And before you place them in the oven, you wanna cover them in a sweet mixture. So the mixture we made is three tablespoons of agave syrup with a dash of cayenne pepper. And then you plop it in the microwave for about, we do like 30 seconds or so. Yeah, just not to, too long, just to mix it up with the, it liquefies it a little bit more and it, uh, it really mixes in the cayenne pepper to give it a little bit of, of a bite. Then you place the nuts on parchment paper and you just cover it with the syrup that you made, roll it around so every nut is covered. Set your oven to about 400. And then you just plop it in and we usually roast them for about 12 to 15 minutes depending on how good your oven is. And you do want to check up on them because once we did burn them. <laughs> yeah, you just got to keep an eye on them because they burn easy and the yeah. liquid, the agave can burn into the paper a little bit. So just keep an eye on it and when it feels right, you'll know. Yeah, and then honestly, they're so delicious that you can even eat them as a snack as well, not just in salad. And then, so we got the nuts ready, then we start with the salad. So we take this, the spinach and the arugula, chop up a little bit of uh, apples, a little bit of cucumbers. Exactly. Toss the nuts in there, and then you prep your dressing. And the dressing we use today is one of our favorite dressings, and it is literally just a mixture of olive oil, apple cider vinegar, and again, a little bit of agave syrup, as well as lemon juice. You just whisk it together, cover the salad with it. And then our last uh, topping that we love to include is the hemp seeds to give it a little bit of a protein into the salad. And there you have it. It's an amazing spinach arugula roasted nut salad. And that's our lunch. <laughs>
So for dinner today, we're planning to make our favorite stuffed peppers. And stuffed peppers are amazing because they leave a fantastic impression. They look really, really... Um, fancy? Fancy? Yeah. Fancy? 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 Yeah. Like you know what you're doing. And they, they take a little bit more time, it's just under an hour, but at the end of the day, the impression it leaves is it's perfect. So you're like, look at me, I'm a vegan chef. <laughs> and it's delicious as well, so it's one of our favorite dishes to make. So to begin to make the peppers, first you start with the stuffing. So you make the quinoa on the side, and then you move over to the stir fry portion. And you basically just quickly, you know, put a little bit of oil in the pan and you stir fry. For us today, we did carrots, uh, mushrooms, garlic, and a little bit of onion. And you stir fry that up and then add lentils in with the stir fry. Mm -hmm. So you stir fry the lentils, the veggies, maybe about five to seven minutes or so. And then you take a can of tomato sauce and you put that in there as well. Mix it around. And you cook it for a little bit, for probably about five or seven minutes with the tomato sauce so the liquid aspect of it starts to dissipate. Um, there, therefore, next when you take the quinoa and you add that in with the stir-fried lentils, um, you're making more of a paste. The goal here is uh, it's, it's like a paste of stuffing rather than sort of like a tomato sauce that you put on spaghetti. Exactly. And then so after the stuffing is done, you're going to move over to your peppers. So first you take the peppers, you cut the top off the peppers. And it's like a little lobotomy, like you cut around in a circle and you grab it by the stem and you pop the top off. Most of the seeds and the core will come with it, but if anything's left out on the inside, uh, you can take a spoon or a knife and just sort of hollow it out so you mm -hmm. have a really nice little, uh, like, a, like a cup. Like a pepper bowl, I guess. Like a, yeah, like a strange pepper bowl. And then all you do is you literally take the stuffing you created and you place it into the pepper. And then you plop them into the oven for about 50 minutes, that's five zero. Five zero. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's a little bit longer than most things you have to bake, but it's worth it. So um, again, because after the 50 minutes, all of the flavors really moves into the pepper and the pepper cooks really nicely. Oh, it's it makes so like good. a and soft it's bowl. Soft, yeah, like so you can actually dig in with your fork. So after you cooked it for 50 minutes, you take the peppers out, you add the tops that you cut off on top of the peppers, like a little hat. Yeah, you put the hat on and then <laughs> the hat. And then you put it back in the oven and set your oven to broil mm -hmm. for about five minutes. But keep an eye on it because you don't want the broil to burn the, the outsides pepper. of the peppers. Because exactly. then you get a really ugly looking fancy dish. And, and Yeah, and that's it. And then you take them out and you have a wonderful soft stuffed quinoa pepper. There you go. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. All right, guys, there you have it. That's what we eat in a day. All right, yeah, all the recipes and directions are down below in the description. So if you guys actually want to try cooking these at home, you can go ahead and follow along step by step of what to do. And leave a comment. Let us know how it goes. Let us know how you like the video. Mm -hmm. um, like the video with the checkbox if you did like it. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. And then also, if you guys end up using different variations into the recipes, we would love to hear about that because like you know, we love switching up um, our Different meals. ingredients yeah. and different twists to it all. So. We love playing with it. So if you found something that really worked for you, let us know, we'd love to hear it. Wicked guys. Thanks um, so much, yeah. and we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.